Greetings and welcome family. Pardon the slight delay. Uh, I was out doing laundry and uh, I had to run home and, you know, rinse off for you, you know, cause I can't come in here sweaty, but uh, our co-host this Miss Bliss will be here shortly as well as the featured guest Acacia. So without further ado, let's get into the opening with our brother Baraka straight out of the lover in you every single day we are called to walk in our purpose answer the call lay down your burden and anything that holds you back and take your rightful place the battle is everywhere it's right in your face let's go after dragging the laundry home. So I want to thank y'all family for being patient while uh, I had to rinse and hydrate to acclimate so that I can associate with the show. And uh, thank you, Ms. Bliss, for all that you've been doing. I'm sure you was having a good time in the WhatsApp chat today. <laughs> 
Um, it was a slow day. It was a slow day. Oh, a slow day. It was like fishing, huh? Mm. <laughs> mm. Okay. So family, uh, we're going to do the invocation. Then we're going to have our beautiful sister, Righteous Ray, give a community announcement. So without further ado, let's see. Uh, just to make you aware, today is Friday. It's a holiday weekend. All who are in the uh, comments, all the audience, if you want to comment, let us know what part of the world you are listening from. Because we always appreciate to know where the crystal keeping Jedi's of their I am are acoustically holding their divine flame. All right. So uh, Sunday, for those, I see a lot of people, Bliss, you notice a lot of people like to complain in the chat. <laughs> so what I say is, have you been to the I am chant classes on Sunday or to the healing circle Tuesdays. So this is a reminder family of what's happening on Sunday. God, they gave me a copyright uh, because of that song. So Sundays, 1030 AM here at journey to bliss.com. I mean, not.com journey to bliss on YouTube and <laughs> Uh, Magnus Crystal's Pyramids. So I've been in lab zone lately, so bear with me. I'm still getting myself uh, adjusted to this crystal innovation because I think I have a new generation of uh, crystal healing weapon grade amulets. So uh, let's move into the invocation. You ready, Bliss? Yes, yes. All right. I am in me. You know what? Let me put some music in the background for this because I, I feel like having a little bit of music to cool me down. So let's see if this helps. Let me turn it up a little bit. Okay. Okay, family. I suggest I don't have to. Souls that are cultivating a peeling away of amnesia to our circumstance of the human member. Each of us literally hit the soul lotto by incarnation, whether you crash landed or got slammed like the first movie Terminator teleporting down through the stargate of your arm and we say individually and collectively welcome and congratulations any landing any birth you can walk away from all crystal keeping Jedi whatever tools you may have find with this time. thank you Thank you. Thank you for landing and walking from the airport to adolescence. May you change the colors of your aura and your spirit as so that you can fight clean the windshield, the windshield and the mirrors of your shock. We can live life helpless. And as we look behind us, let us together say, as gods and goddesses, perhaps with some amnesia, because as I always say, Psalms 82 6 says, Ye are gods, children of the one most high. That means every facet of God's omnipotent. Energy, miracles, you have that too. So, we are looking at them through the halls of time, with all the incarnation, 
Individually collected before the Who who are who we are in relation to our ascended master So the Khan, Enoch the Ethiopian, who ascended into the heavens and became Metatron. We welcome you to be on the path. Be with us tonight. Nikolai Tesla. We ask that you be with us tonight. Call on the gatekeeper of Northern California, who Mount Shasta, the hollow access into the Earth's interior, Saint Germain. Thank you. Be welcome. It is Christ in the Congo. Gael, please protect all of our brothers and sisters wherever they be. Children, please protect all our friends and family. Healing on Angel Raphael, the platform tonight. Angel of Enlightenment, Angel Yuri, Angel of Strength, Forces of Nature that is within our being. Elegba, Oshun, Gemaya, Oya, Oyo, Oon, Shango, Oon, Call upon the Buddhas, the Krishnas, who be a Seraphis Bay, Kaboni, Master Himalaya, Ascended Masters of Atlantis, Ascended Masters of Lemuria, we ask for planetary intervention, grassroots and leadership, known and unknown throughout the world. We ask for a divine coup to take dominion over this beautiful spaceship planet Earth so that we can have 
a harmonious, lovely, and fruitful experience. Transmute this prison planet chicken farm into but we don't see her yet but we're going to have our beautiful sister righteous ray you got something coming up now uh, right out of uh, turn, turn your unmute your mic tell us what you yes. got going on girl this weekend when is it june let me get that fly run welcome to madness yes, christmas thank pyramid yes thank you so much thank you how you doing how you doing greetings family greetings. we're having a juneteenth event on Monday, June 19th, so with the intention of uplifting our community and the consciousness and the spirit, we at the Coney Island Ambassadors for Change will be celebrating Juneteenth again, Monday, June 19th, from 11 to 2 in Kaiser Park. The entrance is on West 31st Street and Neptune Avenue. Any vendors who would like to participate you can email us at ci.ambassadorsforchange, that's the number four, at gmail.com. So come out and tap in to help us in anchoring in some good vibes. Again, this is our second one, too. This is our second one in Coney Island. So we're hoping for this one to be a really, a really special nice. event this time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hey, what's your motivation, sister? Why did you, what, what uh, inspired you to? step up and create such a uh, potentially magnificent program you know for you tell us who you are a little bit we got some time well, you know where you come from you know like you just incarnated down said look here we gotta get busy what, what, what's going on tell us well the, the well i believe the reason i was incarnated in this community that i'm in right now in coney island where i was born and raised is mm -hmm. to anchor in some righteousness but also to provide some healing for my community mm. uh, y'all y'all already know the, the the shenanigans we've been through as a people so it's important for me to make sure there are avenues of healing in my community but also events and resources are, that can empower us you know give us knowledge and break us out of that mental that mental matrix that illusion that a lot of us attract in yes makes sense makes sense all right, well, this is the flyer, y'all. So wow, look at all the wonderful things that they have. Food, mm, that's my favorite right there. <laughs> right. Go food, right? You got that food, got that food. <laughs> dancing, music, mm, music and dancing is another one of my favorite. Libations, uh, food distribution, activities, culture, education, and workshops, guys. Make sure you get down to Coney Island on June 19th. It sounds empowering. Mm. Yes, and that's what we're hoping. That's what we're looking for. You got to make sure Juneteenth is not about just a uh, party. You got to make sure you're dropping some gems into the people. You know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, is there any age limit? Can can they bring children? Is it going to be appropriate? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yep. We will bring all ranges. I want the whole family to come out. Just kind of like a bring your own blanket type of environment. Right. So come out and have a good time. We're going to have vendors there. We're going to have people from the community. We're going to have a uh, barbecue and things like that. So we're going to have some good food. You know, it's always good for you. It's good food in the area. So we're going to have people from the community who already that people already know cook good. We're going to have them out there too as well. So it's going to be really nice. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for this space right now. And Brother Hank and you, Miss Bliss as well for allowing me to present this to the people as well nice nice Reminds me of that song got to give the people <laughs> you that know song? what <laughs> right. i think it's the, it, you said this is the second time you guys have done it yes wow wow so this is really really good this is really good and it's it, i'm glad to hear that you guys are being consistent with it you know, as you're consistent, then you know it would grow. The community will grow. You get more people coming out and more support. 
So I think yes. that's really, really good. Yes, and yeah. it only can get better. It can only get better. Okay, exactly. you know, for people who are interested, um, what's your contact information? We'll, let me put up a banner for you. Real oh, quick. also, uh, yes, yeah, great job. I forgot to give the email for any vendors yeah, who want email? to gonna... participate. Yeah, what's the, the email? The email is ci.ambassadors. Ci, CI what? Dot. Dot. Ambassadors. M -bas How you spell ambassador? A M B A S S A. Ambassador or ambassador? Am, am, like am. N B A S S S S A D O R S. Uh huh. The number four. Number four. Hold on. And the four. word change. Huh? The word change. Ambassador. At gmail dot. Yes. At gmail dot com. Mm -hmm. Yes, you got it. That's it. Okay. What else? Is, what's your social media contact? Um, my social media on Instagram is Elevate to Levitate. Okay, Instagram contact is Elevate. The number two. Two. Levitate. Levitate. And uh, any any other social media contact? I have my YouTube channel where I do my ecumenic YouTube yoga. Channel. Typing this in. Go ahead. What is it? Cosmic Ray. Cosmic ray yes cosmic ray unity consciousness oh that's in one that's one sentence i mean one word um yes cosmic ray unity consciousness all right scroll that on you got there. it that's a lot girl that's a lot, <laughs> you, a lot. What, is, what, is your birthday? what month is your birthday <laughs> July, July, July. July what? I'm 14. I'm a cancer. She's a cancer, y'all. Look at it. And I see why you talk about levitating anti-gravity. Your hairstyle don't want to stay earthbound. <laughs> she, she do not want to stay earthbound. I hear you. you know, I'm close to like, the cosmos. Combination, I'd be flipping like your little okay. Wait, you. Uh, you, could you tell us a little bit about the services that you offer? Because you did say that um, you do, um, you say... Uh, Reiki or yoga? I do comedic comedic yoga. I teach comedic, comedic yoga. yoga. Yes, comedic mm -hmm. yoga. And mm -hmm. I teach out of a gym right now in um, 9064 Hamilton Parkway on okay. Sundays from 10 to 11. And then uh, the weather's getting nice. I'm also going to be doing some classes on the beach as well. Wow. So, yes. Yoga. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's great, Ryzen Sun. Comedic yoga? Really, really yeah. good. Tell us who your teacher was. Who's your teacher uh, from Comedic Yoga? Yasir. Yasir Rahotep. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And his teacher's out of Chicago. What's his name? I forgot his name. I just want to give him acknowledgement. Yasir's teacher. He's an elder. I forgot mm -hmm. his name. I guess you forgot his name. Mine is Lincoln. Oh. Yeah, my mind is Lincoln right now. Yeah, special shout out to him. Don't also. be mad at me. You said, don't be mad at me. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yes, I, he, I took his class in Jamaica. He also does classes in Jamaica and Egypt as well. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. That's you know, cool. um, you took the Wachuma medicine with us, not to get off the topic, but uh, do you want to give a quick oh, little... that's right on time. That's oh, right on time, Bliss. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about Wachuma. <laughs> you were up in the mountains with us with that Wachuma, and she's a cancer. So when oh, that man. water portal opens, oh man, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared. <laughs> I wasn't prepared. But um, brother, I seen it from brother Hank had mentioned it on one of his uh, his videos that he was going to be going to watch you. And I was like, yeah, let me see what this is about. And I was like, oh. Mm -hmm. And then Spirit was like, yep, you need to be going up there. So I mentioned to one of my my friends, uh, Kali, and she came up there with me and. It was an experience that I, I can't forget. I can't forget. The way the fire be talking to you is, is, is unbelievable. Yes, yes, yes. I remember when you were there up in the mountains. Yeah, that was a beautiful night. That was a, it's always, you know, a different experience with the, with the medicine, you know, because the group is always different. The energy is always different. Everything is, is different all the time. So, 
but I remember it being a good ceremony that night. So yeah, yeah, yes, it yeah. was. It it, 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 for me to be my first time, and you know what I mean. Sometimes people panic. It was able. It was a good supportive space to you know other people who already done it before and was able to you know what I mean. Keep the keep the vibe grab grounded. So. It was a good first time to be in a space like that with people who, you know, support the experience and not, you know. So it was yes. nice. So you how guys, you, I know you guys done it more than them too. How has you say? What was your experience as far as after the ceremony, doing the uh, Wachuma? Well, I needed to tap in more to my to my ancestors, and one one in particularly was my my grandfather from my my mother's side. And out of all my answers that I didn't have, that I had on my, my altar, he, he, I didn't have him. So it was like, uh-uh, you better, mm -hmm. <laughs> you better recognize, you better not forget about me. And to also be like, I got to feed, you got to feed me, keep feeding me, keep feeding me. So mm -hmm. it was um, like a, a whole, like, I would say like paternal, paternal thing that, that happened. And a lot of releasing of, things that you just think you you don't you dealt with and then it's like oh mm -hmm. no you got a little bit of residue mm -hmm. <laughs> you gotta get some residue out. Mm -hmm. exactly and it's always like that you know we do the work and we're working on ourselves and we think oh i'm ready for the next step or the next level and then something triggers and then we have to revert back clean that up brush it up and then move forward and Wachuma is a great medicine for um, families and generations um, back and forth. Mm -hmm. So if you're calling on your ancestors or if you want to connect with the future children, it's a great medicine. Or just connecting with yourself, you know, because your ancestors are within you anyway. So mm -hmm. it opens you up, activates you. And it's not just that night. It's a couple of weeks after that that you're still activated. So it's definitely absolutely wonderful <laughs> definitely yeah. I, I had some I had some um some moments <laughs> with Zoe. Yes. When, when I and um, my friend Kali that came with me, so I was calling her like, girl, did you girl, did you have did you see this? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. But it was like all um it was more synchronistic between the both of us and but like stuff that we both really really needed to pay attention to. So yeah. Right. Right, right, exactly. And it's important that to, it's important to know that these herbs are like they they here for a reason. You know what I mean? A lot of us, well, even with me, before I even know about it, it was like, what you doing? What I don't know about that. But as you actually, actually, when you actually tap in, you realize like, oh, I should have been yeah. doing this, but better late than yes. never. Yes, yes. It assists with healing on so many different levels. You know. Um, and people, like you said, are always um, frightened because they're not sure what kind of experience they're going to have or what it's going to be like. Mm -hmm. But no one's afraid of the current life that they're living, you know, how the, the horrible dreams and nightmares that they have day and night, just walking on the street, just fear of, you know, relationships and friendships, fear of losing the job, fear of not having enough money, just fear not, not be little things like not losing weight, like all of these things could be addressed. You know, mm -hmm. if you work with yourself, you take the medicine and you do the work. But a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to do it. So you want to continue to live this type of life that you're living with no guidance, no assistance, you know, and you're not even receiving any any messages from your ancestors, guides, spirit guides like the entheogens open you up so that you can get messages like saying, you know, you're supposed to be there on June 19th. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, you're supposed to promote yourself so you can grow your business so that you can go here and do that. And. If you're blocking, you got all these blockages, mm -hmm. you're not receiving the downloads. So we got to figure mm -hmm. out a way to open up. We have yep, to. You're absolutely right. And it's like blocking the way to receive, too. You keep blocking, oh, exactly. blocking the way you receive, yeah. Exactly. Are you muted? I think you're muted, Rising Sun. Oops, thank you. All right. Okay. Uh, and family, let us know if our sound is good. Can you hear me good, Bliss? Mm-hmm. All right. I, I can hear you. you. Okay, cool. Uh, I want to thank you, sister, for uh, sharing your program, your energy for coming forth into this incarnation, because you look like you only got here a few years ago. 
But I'll be 40 this year. <laughs> you heard that, family? Look at this. Say it again, because you ain't going to call me no liar. Yeah, I'll be 40 this year. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Pre-happy birthday. Thank you, mm. thank you, thank you. Must thank be you. living a good life, Cancerian. Thank you, thank you. Yes, I am. Yes. Only about to get better. Said, yes, I am. Um, Someone wanted to know, are you talking about the which retreat? The one with Juan Pablo? Because we have a retreat coming up um, in June with uh, Juan Pablo, where he'll be serving a number of medicines. Um, and also, I think that's promoted by Steve. So if you're in the chat, we will be dropping that information. Um, we'll also be promoting um, online for anybody who wants the information and wants to attend. Um, what other, there's a Tantra retreat, but I'm not sure if we can have outsiders come. I'm waiting for the confirmation from Adara. Tantra is very, um, yeah. Sometimes we cannot have all types of people around when doing that type of work. So I'd have to get authorization from her. But I do know in June we have the retreat coming up with Steve. And I believe also Juan Pablo comes in September. So it should be uh, June and also September. So if you're looking to take uh, the medicine Yopo, which is a beautiful medicine, um, he also does a shroom ceremony. He does bufo. Um, we did the, was it the mambe and the copy? Woo! Beautiful love medicine to activate that heart and that throat chakra. Even if you're having an argument with somebody, you'd be like, you know what? I can't stand you today. And they'd be like, oh, that's okay. We can talk about it. You'd be like, all the love is just gushing out of you. <laughs> oh, he cleans you out with Cambo. All of those spirits, all of those negative energies. Um, so the Cambo is the first thing we do. He cleans us out. And then we get all of those medicines on uh, while we're there for the weekend. So it's usually a three-day weekend, but um, I don't know if Steve has a three-day weekend. Rodinson, do you know? Yeah, I think it's going to be um, from Friday to Sunday. From okay, Friday to Friday Sunday. To Sunday. Mm -hmm. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful weekend. And, and let me we tell you, the, that camel. Sauna. Woo! Tell them about that camel, please. Huh? Tell them about camel. So the Cambo, oh my goodness. I have never taken Cambo with that many people at one time. And when I say Juan Pablo is, let me tell you, his sham, shaman experience with, with me is at such a high level that I cannot sit with any shaman who cannot produce the way that Juan Pablo produced. That's how impressed I was. We all said what we wanted to manifest in a circle. I think it was about what, 20 people, 15, 20 people. And he said to each of us, you know, what are your goals? What do you want to do? What do you want to accomplish? What are you trying to work with? How do you feel? What, you know, whatever it is. And each one of us explained to him what we wanted out of that whole weekend. And then he went and served us according to what we were requesting. He didn't just serve us Cambo. Yeah, he's a true. He served us according to what each one of us was looking to accomplish in our lives. I was absolutely amazed because I'd never seen that before. And with that said, you know, I don't know if anybody knows exactly what Cambo is, but, you know, we have to purge. He then educated us as to the what's coming out of our bodies, depending on the way the purge uh, comes out of our body, it would tell us a lot about the person and what they're going through. So you would be able to recognize anxiety, fear, anger, like all of these things he educated us on. So we would look at the, and we would know, okay, well, you would have to admit it at that point and acknowledge that, look, you, you have anger within you. Like a lot of us are walking around here, angry, hostile, and you, oh no, I'm not angry. Oh no, I'm not hostile. And it may not even be you. It could be something from when you were a child, an experience that you had, a trauma that you never dealt with, you didn't do shadow work, or something that passed on from your ancestors. And so you would have to address that while you're there. It's beautiful, beautiful weekend. Campbell is a beautiful medicine. Gets rid of all the negative spirits, too. I can't. I'm talking too much. Go no, ahead. you're not. You're talking fine. <laughs> yeah. I've done, I've done Campbell before, so I, it, it is an experience. <laughs> it is an experience, definitely. So if you can take like 15 to 20 minutes of the Campbell, clean yourself out, 
you know, educate yourself about it. Um, and yeah, it's it's well worth the trip with the Cambo. Well worth it. It's well worth the cleaning um, out of your system. So, yeah. Well, I want to talk about, um, okay, family. I just got a uh, call and a text from Acacia. She's having a little bit of a challenge technically, but she'll be with us shortly. So while we're waiting for her to come on, I want to tell you, family, Cambo is the frog venom. This is known as the Amazon vaccination. The history is the indigenous people of South America, the norm is being able to talk to plants the same way we communicate with the internet, that people, other people, indigenous people throughout the world communicate with the plant kingdom the way we connect with the internet. So a, the person was, one particular person was asking, how can I heal, asking the ayahuasca, ayahuasca medicine, how can I heal the diseases in my village? And the ayahuasca gave him the recipe to use the, a particular frog to get the venom off of the frog's skin, burn the top layer of skin off and apply it lightly in order to become, clean the blood from all viruses, all bacteria, all diseases, uh, break spells and things of sort. And at the retreat, it's highly recommended that uh, you do Campbell before you embrace the other entheogens. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like it's a natural way of doing an exorcism of any bad frequency or illnesses or diseases. I just saw Acacia come on and she just dropped out again. Uh, she'll be back. She's, she's breaking through the matrix. There she is. Yay, you made it. Hey, sorry about that. Okay, Ray, you can hang out with us if you have time. I got a few minutes. I'm about to, the, the space I'm in is about to close. It sounds like they, they will be right. out of here, but I'll hang in for a little bit. How you doing, sister? Awesome, awesome. Peace, Acacia, peace. Well, Acacia, the, the table, the, the, the platform is yours because I want to go hook up the uh, rotating crystals. So I got to step off and uh, you got the platform. All right, cool. So I wanted to do this uh, lecture because um, most of the time in the conscious community, we don't have very many integration tools that are limitless in the terms of our access to spiritual planes of, of knowledge and recognition. I mean by limitless, I mean by tools that don't require us to be in ceremony with ayahuasca or mushrooms or in tobacco or cannabis ceremony, um, things that help us to tap into our natural body's ability to generate um, vibrational energy. Um, hi. Um, for me, I've been in a space where integrating on a daily basis has been it's a necessity because a lot of conscious people go ceremony to ceremony month after month looking for something that's right there they know it's right there it's just a matter of connecting with source inside of these moments that are so very precious to us that we get every single day um and learning what to do with that um authentically you know um so i wanted to do this lecture about tea because of the fact that it's for me, it's one of the most underrated psychedelics I've ever met. And, you know, we love to talk about how ancient ayahuasca is, how ancient the mushroom is. But the truth is, you know, we've been sleeping on a lot of these plants that are two and 3,000 years old that they're still producing buds that are being picked and preserved in a sacred way. And we have lost respect for traditions that don't come out of Africa. And so for, for me, I, I don't think that there's anything that doesn't come out of Africa, first of all. It's just... It's just a time period, and if we look at things as, as a family, if we look at, at ourselves as children of this planet rather than as individuals who are locked into these coded um, uh, racial and cultural uh, uh, wounds, 
you know, we gotta birth ourselves into the higher dimensional collective of beings who are here on this planet for a higher purpose than just to talk about sacred stuff. And for me personally, that stepping into presence is that. Because when you are present, you are in full connection and communion with source. And you are not limited by the constructs of time. I just had a conversation with one of my friends last over an hour. It felt like five minutes, you know, and that's how you know you're, you're having fun. Time flies when you're having fun because you're present when you're having fun. And when fully present time doesn't exist. Time is simply an illusion. And so bringing ourselves into a state of presence inside of the moment and to be able to stretch time and travel in real time uh, is, is a gift that a lot of times we chase using entheogens. We think we can be more present and be more conscious and aware because we saw you know, the entrance to some temple of Aset or something. We think we can become more present and aware by seeing that we're divine, but that's really, there, there are levels of peace which come beneath those dimensions that are so colorful and filled with vibrance and healing energy that don't take shape or appearance. They're unformed, uncreated. It was out of that uncreated space that those divine forms sprung forth. So being, being present in that bardo, in that womb space, is something that a lot of people are afraid of or don't really know how to access. And I was just telling uh, one of my friends, a sister, you know, that the object of working in a traditional sweat lodge is to create a, a womb on top of the on top of the planet, basically to create um, a dark space where we can go and commune with the earth and the beating heart of the earth and say our prayers and be healed by the earth in that dark and healing space. And sometimes we've got to create that in our waking reality. We can't always go and step in the sweat lodge. We can't always go into ceremony every day um, inside of the medicine because we form a tolerance. But what we can do is go inside of ourselves, go inside of our own womb space, and tap deeper into the heart and the root of healing that exists in every single one of us. And it's slowing down. That does that. It's not speeding up. It's not going and taking a bunch of ethnobotanicals and getting high on blue lotus paste and chocolate. You know, that's fun. I like that. But the truth is, it distracts you. It's just the tarot cards are distraction. The blue lotus is a distraction. The cannabis is a distraction. You get further and further and further and further away from presence, the more stuff you add to the equation. You're already perfect. You don't need anything outside of yourself to connect deeper within. And this is something that, that triggered me when I was young in the community, when elders would say, oh, I'm already there. I don't need 20 grams of mushrooms to get there. It took me until now to understand what there is. I thought there was seeing myself as a god. I thought there was being able to do high magic. That's not there. There is before all of that. There is the primordial super conscious, infinite space that is within all of us and connecting to the harmonics of the supreme source code within ourselves and creating real time. You might even be in that space where you think that your ISIS are all set and not able to do anything because you're still dealing with hurt feelings from your last relationship. So you're in a Kali, angry, divine, dark goddess mode and unable to break out of that anger and that primordial rage inside of yourself thinking that you're you're at the top and honestly i'm sorry to break it to you that you, you, you're still growing you're still you're still you're still at a place where you need to go in within and heal and release that divine rage in such a way so that you can fill it with divine compassion the, the beauty of the primordial empty space is that you can create anything from it. You don't have to create fantasies of divinity. You don't have to, to go into other alternate lifetimes. You can simply just be and have an audience with divine spirit that is you and create whatever you want from that space or have the choice not to create at all, just to be at peace. And I think that peace of mind and joy have been limited by so many different corporations and chemicals in our food and stuff. We got a whole community of black folks who are dedicated to unplugging from processed foods and still don't understand that we can, um, we can unplug from unprocessed, uh, from processed thoughts, 
processed thoughts are just as bad for you at times as un as processed foods because those processed thoughts are carrying information to other places that aren't that are not in your in your highest favor. So those processed thoughts are thoughts that say, okay, I can't heal unless I got this. I can't continue forward unless I go through this rite of passage. You've got to access the master source code within inside yourself outside of using psychedelics as a pathway forward. The, the psychedelics can be the temple on the side of the mountain for you instead of just the pretty colors on the side of the mountain, you know? It's the reverence that you have for the temple that makes it a temple. But you be walking past it, not even knowing a temple is there because you see it so much. You have lost the appreciation for it on the level of profundity that creates the vision of it being clear. So if you really want to get the most out of your psychedelic experience, you should do it less often. You should do it like maybe four times a year or three times a year and have a really deep experience so that you can get the full picture of the places that you're going instead of a halfway picture, wondering why everybody else is going to um, a different place than you. It's not about them. It's about you and your connection with the divine within. So for me, when I set up my tea table, when I sit in front of it, the first things I'm creating are the elements of life itself. Everything needs water and everything needs heat. Without heat and without water, none of us would exist. So for me, I'm doing an ancient ritual. I'm honoring the fundamental of life that exists within me. Guess what my body produces? Heat. Guess, guess, guess what is inside of, 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 my, of my body? Water. And that's also helping my body to function on a daily basis. So rather than reverencing the medicine as being the tool to connect with my higher self, I'm connecting with the elements of life itself and giving reverence to the creator through those two elements of heat and water, simply, you know? And a, a lot of us lose ourselves in the elaborations of what herbal tea is and what, what, the, what the utilization is for the tea and what the herb does. And we don't know the herb, we know the little paragraph that they put on the outside of the package, you know? And so I really want us to go deeper into learning what is the spirit and the intelligence that the plant is carrying and how do we unlock that utilizing water to access the source spirit inside of the plant. Uh, you know what, Acacia, I want you to um, spend a little bit of time, spend a little bit of time talking about the lack of integration on the people taking various types of psychedelics or entheogens, because I've seen that is almost like an epidemic Yes. The lack of integration. I mean, yes. I'm not hearing the message of the plant kingdom because when I come out, I even had um like Brother Rich was like, I don't see, I don't see the change in people after they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling exactly. you, family exactly. is an epidemic of people exactly. not integrating. I don't care what it is. I've seen the uh the lack of integration in multiple platforms. Please, Acacia, tell us why is that? because people want something for nothing. They want to be able to receive the accolades from the community for doing something, but they don't understand that you get in, you get out what you put in. They don't understand the work starts after the journey or, and before the journey. If you're not integrating beforehand and you've got your why tapped in and your why doesn't include anybody else but you and your higher self, then you you don't even have a reason, in my opinion, to be looking at the psychedelic if, if you're doing it for self self development because self development gets organized and when you're unorganized and you don't have a relationship with yourself without psychedelics when you go into the psychedelic you're still experimenting with who you are you're still you're still you're still trying to figure out what you're supposed to do. And that's not, no work has been done there. You're still laying the framework. So a lot of people spend years laying the framework for their self-development and think they're working. They might be working on one level, but they haven't even really entered the quality arena of finish exemp exemplifying the qualities that they should be trying to cultivate in themselves. Pre-integration is just important as post-integration. The pre-integration is understanding 
what it is that you're doing in your daily life for yourself, taking care of yourself and taking care of those around you in your community. A lot of people say, well, I'm trying to heal. So I need to do the mushrooms first. I said, no, no, no. The mushrooms are not going to heal you. The mushrooms are just a tool to heal you. They are not what is healing you. You're the one who's healing you. And they're like, well, I don't believe that. I'm like, well, you need to sit with that and process those emotions before you get to the trip. Because if you're sitting there with all these unprocessed emotions of doubt, you're still going to be sitting there doubting what you really did see. And that's going to hold you back every time. You keep going back for more. And every time you go in, you're like, well, I don't really think that that was it. And I don't really know that my connection's that strong. And it's because on the outside, before you got to the trip, you were not integrating those unprocessed emotions about your self-image. That needs to be dealt with. You need to go to therapy. You need to talk to somebody. Sit down for some tea before you go in. Yeah, so this I would say I would go so far from my my experience. It is an epidemic of lack of integration because I don't see people making the change. I I still act, I still see, you know, uh egotistic mm -hmm. I, I see unaddressed shadow work that needs to be um, accessed mm -hmm. and I'm talking about in all ethnic groups that I've gone across Acacia ethnic groups it's not just you know people are, people of color all over them in America you got racism mm -hmm. you got Greeks in the psychedelic community you have uh, um, egotism you yes. have like cult personalities. You have the same mm -hmm. ugliness you find in anybody's cornerstone, corner front, um, uh, uh, storefront, uh, um, Jesus store. You see it in the psychedelic community. So, like, w so what's the remedy? I mean, like, it, are you are you going to give them a Bible, the liquor store, or a mushroom? Because they don't change. I'm saying major lack of change. Yeah. And in not only that. Not only that, talk about the people in the community who are serving the medicine, both taking the medicine, and you still see all of these things that's activating within them that you would not expect to see in a person who's not taking the medicine. Well, part of it is lack of initiation, lack of ritual and traditional use, lack of traditional values, lack of obedience to traditional values, i.e. the laws of Ma'a or the, the Omoluwabe uh, characteristics, the son and daughter of a chief. We need ethics. We need uh, morality. We need equality. We need compassion. We need forgiveness. We need kindness. We need gentleness. We need divine qualities. You know, I'm actually giving a lecture right now on a live platform. Um, You're doing two lectures at the same time, Acacia. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna call it. Um, so honestly, when it comes down to it, if if these qualities don't exist inside of our community, then we just have a stagnant chamber of nonsense that's taking place. And so in order to remedy that stagnation, we need people who are all fighting for a mutual cause. And that cause needs to be centered around embodiment. And embodiment requires integration. It requires the hard work. And that's something that people, they think they're, they're, they're being brave when they're going into the really, really high doses. But the truth is, that's still cowardly behavior because you're looking to, for it to take you to the next level, but you're not willing to take the right steps to get there. Listen, this is a subject that's way overdue. And uh, let's just talk about like other social media platforms. I mean, the, the amount of self-hate that's perpetuated. And when I took my ayahuasca years ago, it told me get off Facebook. I obeyed. I got off Facebook. The next thing it told me a couple of years later, get off Instagram. I did. But I'm hearing echoes of people telling me the black on black violence and degradation uh, across the social platforms instead of practicing business and having ethics. 
it's like horrendous what I'm hearing. And I'm not on these platforms, but I'm hearing like, oh, they're supposed to be into entheogens, but look how they're acting. It's like, they might as well go out here. I find more authenticity with the winos at the liquor store on the corner <laughs> than I do in some of the ethnic uh, entheogenic circles. <laughs> the alcoholics, the winos at the corner got a brotherhood. You know, as a, a community that doesn't hold itself accountable, that's a problem because there are a lot of people who are afraid to burn bridges with their friends and they're afraid to hold people accountable to a higher standard. If there's no accountability and uh, the eldership is afraid to, to step up and say, okay, this person is a charlatan. This person uh, is an abuser. When, there, when, there's, when there's no accountability uh, coming, coming from people who people look to and they say that they trust, then that's a problem, you know? And so either we're gonna have this be traditional or we're not. Either there's gonna be some eldership and some guidance from uh, older women and older men who are honorable and the community sees them as honorable, or there isn't. And if there isn't, then we have to find a way to get the message out to folks that you've got to change your actions before we take you seriously. We don't take people seriously if they don't exemplify some basic ethical and basic moral understanding. We got people here starting schools who ain't never studied nowhere. We got people here uh, teaching herbalism who, who got sick babies at home. We got we got a lot of recklessness, and it's the recklessness is partially because of capitalism. People have to survive. And so in order to create a living for themselves, sometimes they use other people. And that's not okay. That's never been okay. But unless we start tapping into our creative passions and supporting each other as a community, then people are always going to be in this street struggle, suffer paradigm that's going to create uh, a systemic lack of under undervalued people who are authentically doing the work and people who are valued who aren't doing the work but they're charging more and so they're able to present themselves in a way that is acceptable to the mainstream world and the mainstream society while you got a bunch of folks who are really doing the work behind the scenes suffering because they're willing to give of themselves and give of the medicine in ways that are unprecedented in comparison to what other folks are, are doing. Those are the folks with a nice website. Those are the folks with a fancy car. And those are the folks with the nice retreat centers. But they're not doing it for the reason of helping the people. They're doing it because they are capitalizing on people's ignorance. And that's why I really think it's important for you to learn how to serve yourself and learn how to sit with yourself. Because a lot of us in the black community don't know how to sit, you know, and sitting is the oldest known ritual in the world. You know, we talk about meditation, but the truth is learning to sit and observe is going to serve you better than any meditation school you can go to. Learning how to watch and listen and tap into divine spirit inside of yourself, that is something that is the most useful thing that I've learned working with entheogens and I didn't even value it on the level that I do today when I first started first four or five years that I was in. And so for me personally, I feel like as as a teacher, as someone who appreciates the medicine, this mainstream shamanism and neo shamanic model doesn't serve me. My my teachers didn't talk about you know, me doing anything like that, you know, um, I, I support people who do shamanism in an honorable way. And I'm not saying that shamanism itself is bad, but, you know, you know that we got a bunch of McDojos and a bunch of mixed shamans and a bunch of folks who really don't have the experience to be out here presenting themselves to the people and asking for money in a certain kind of way. It's become a circus, you know, and a lot of us warned about, you know, folks in the community, but because of some of the people's behaviors and negative actions, we didn't want to be attacked. So we just step back. You know, somebody says, oh, well, so-and-so ain't doing the right thing or doing right. You know, people got something to say about it all the time. They want to attack the person who's sharing the message. I said, well, you're not right either. Well, the truth is none of us are perfect. We're all human and we're all making mistakes and learning and growing. But when you have a community of accountability and support, you should be having elders and family praying for you as hard as they're holding you accountable. So there shouldn't be this element of fear involved if you get called out. It's the fact that people can't take any criticism. 
we live in a culture where now you criticize somebody for for bagging your groceries wrong at the at the grocery store, you about to get hauled out by the police because you criticized mm-hmm. the wrong person. Yes. And so people can't take construct- constructive criticism and use it as a learning lesson. No, now it is personal. Now you've attacked me, and now I'm going to attack you and fight to the death. And that's the culture that we live in that we're surrounded by. So it's really important for us to go and find that compassion and understanding so that when criticism comes to us, we are able to process it and change and do better. Right. You know, I want to say, you know, I want to give a special shout out. Pardon me, Bliss. I just want to give mm-hmm. a special shout out to my brother Steve, who yes. he serves. If he serves not for the dollar, he yes. serves for the compassionate mm-hmm. desire to assist. Mm-hmm. Now, I know that, and I also want to give a special acknowledgement acknowledgement to my uh, elder, Baba Awolowo for the same thing. I also want to give acknowledgement to my elder sister, Diana Farr. I want yes. to give acknowledgement also to my brother, Laji. I want to give acknowledgement to the brothers and sisters I have met along the pathway that serves the medicine, the herbal medicine, not for a dollar, but they, mm-hmm. they serve it for the purpose of assisting. I am my brother's keeper. I want to, I just want to acknowledge the ones who are serving to be their brothers and their sisters keep because that is truly the way of the plant medicine. I'm going to take that phrase from our Mandalorian. It is the way. Mm-hmm. It's not a dollar. It's, if, it's, if it's a dollar stuck to it, there's a problem because, mm-hmm. you know, we you get your hustle on, but don't use, don't pimp out the plant medicine. That's a, that's a very... You know, for me, like, yes. I see 90% of my Because too many people are pimping the plant kingdom for a dead president that doesn't have any money, any gold attached to the money. But mm-hmm. You know, I mean, honestly. Money. And that's not, the, that, and that is not the way. You know, honestly, like, I'm tired of working for folks who are pimping in medicine. I'm tired of being around folks who who think that that's what it's about. You know, we got a lot of folks out here with some really big egos who are, are not providing services of community needs, you know. And for me personally, like, that's why, like, I mean... Like I took a year off of teaching just because I wanted to go and deepen my skill and my practice. A lot of people aren't willing to go and train and become apprentices and disciples before they start teaching. And for me, I went through 10 years of training and I'm always training. I'm always a student, you know, and I I respect individuals who share medicine freely. And that's what I try to do for people who ask me for help if I have the wherewithal and and the ability to help, I'll send them a package. I'll send them something that they need. Because I feel like it's about reciprocity and about mutual um, energy exchange. And we've lost that as a community, it seems like. Everybody wants to go and sit with somebody else in the medicine. But the truth is, like, you can sit for yourself. You can do the work for yourself. But it's a matter of aligning yourself and asking the right questions internally without self-inquiry there is no integration without self-accountability there is no integration and self-accountability comes from being aligned with a set of values and doing the hard work to stay in alignment with those values of integrity and self-respect if i make a mistake then i try to correct it if I, if I forget somebody's package, I try to send them double or triple what the package was worth. If, if I make a mistake, I try to correct it and learn from it, you know? And there, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of people who are about that culture because it's a warrior culture. It's a warrior uh, tradition, and it, it's, it's, it's indigenous to our people, but at the same time, without those values of ethics and respect, there, there's not going to be any progress. So the reason why I mentioned tea is because tea teaches you a lot because it allows you to sit and be present. Now, I'm not talking about herbal tea specifically. I'm talking about Camellia sinensis. I'm talking about the green tea plant. 
It was a teacher of the Taoists. It was a teacher of the Confucian. It was a teacher of the Buddhists. The Buddhists used it for achieving higher, higher states. They, it was a tool on the way to enlightenment, was learning to sit and make yourself a cup of tea and to be quiet inside of your mind and to release those toxic negative thoughts and to connect to the heart of the plant and listen, deeply listen, become a deeper listener. That's part of uh, the work that the, the green tea plant teaches. You know, the tea that I work with comes from Wee Mountain, and that, that's an area where the Tang Dynasty Emperor exiled all the Buddhist priests and Taoists and Confucians to the wilderness. And they started growing tea plants in that wilderness and started having conversations with each other. You know, and that's where that's where governments get overthrown is when the creatives and the philosophers and the seers and visionaries all get together and start working together at, as a community to create harmony and share information. And I feel that that can happen. I want to chime in on what you just said. I want to chime in. When I was in Hawaii, Bliss, Acacia, Ray, family, listen. I was hanging out with a Hawaiian brother on the island of Molokai. He was a spear fisherman, and his name was Vaai. Special shout out to Vaai and Naomi. Mm -hmm. I don't know where they are now because I've lost touch with them. But they embraced me when I went to Hawaii, Acacia. And the next morning, the brother took me spear fishing. He didn't say, look, this is going to cost you $200. There was a guy on the island that wanted to charge me. But the brother named Vaai, that was his name, Vaai. He said, come on, brother, let's go into the waters together. And he took me spear fishing. And you know what he did? The first thing he did when he had his catch, and I didn't know anything about spear, spear fishing family. There is a, a spirit of Ubuntu, a spirit of Ubuntu that you don't have to put a dollar bill to. Exactly. Took me, after we came out the water, he had, a, he had pounds of fish that he had caught. You know what the first thing he did? Acacia, Bliss, Ray, gifted the elders in the community with the fish that he caught. And he didn't tell them, all right, it's $15 a pound. He didn't put a, a, a colonial um, mark on it. He only gave it from his heart. And that is the spirit of aloha. That yeah, is the spirit of love and reciprocity. And it's not people who are on their responsibility. Um, everything doesn't have. And so another thing I want to say this real quick, education, and I'm going backstage. How many of the so called facilitators actually ask the plant kingdom, sacred plants, what they want as an exchange? That's something I bring up a lot because you got to ask them what it is that you can do for the plant before. You, you even work with the plant. You're not talking to the mushroom and saying, what can I contribute? Lecturing is something I wanted to do. It's my way of contributing back to the community. And working, growing the mushrooms, that's contributing back to the community. You have to ask Iowa for what you can do. You've got to ask these plants how you can contribute because that's the exchange that's the connection between the person, the human, the land, and the community. You know, and without that, that's to without that spirit of Oluwabe, without that that, that Makan, sacred energy, Acacia, your sound the behaviors go along with Acacia, your sound is uh, your sound is breaking up a little Hello? bit. Can you hear me? Yeah, that's better. Okay. That's yeah, I was saying without without the sacred behaviors, you don't have any sacred community. You have to embody the, the traditional aspects of my art by giving to others being reciprocal and you're giving, being honest, being truthful, being forgiving and compassionate and giving back to those who gave to you, reciprocating to your elders and honoring them. Every time I get on a podcast lecture, I honor Bob because he reciprocated to me. That's my reciprocal connection. Every time that I go somewhere and I do something in another place, I give honor to my ancestors. That's reciprocal. It's a connection. Every time I go up to the Mushroom Mountain, I go and I ask the elders of the mountain who have worked on the mushroom for seven generations, what can I do for you? I'm building my college institute in the sacred mountain where the mushroom people still live because that's reciprocation. 
that is the level of dedication that people are not willing to reach. They want to talk about the Muslim house sacred is that ain't never been to a place where the indigenous people have been growing it for seven, eight generations. I'll teach you so much about it right then and there. Go visit where Maria Sabina came. Go visit Florida. Go see what you can donate. Because no matter who you are in the United States, if you're working with it, you have a connection to those tribes. You have a connection because that's whose hand that left when it came back into the United States. It doesn't matter if it's always grown to you. Go back and say, hey, you know, same with ayahuasca. No one who is a comfort their own home to the United States. But they want to go to the rainforest and give thanks. Why go there to have a trip? Go there to support the community and build bathrooms and facilities and pool. You know, it, it, it takes that level of dedication for the plant to bless you, bless you with people, and bless you with the gifts that you can share with others. You don't have those gifts, it's just a plant exposing and revealing how those can be useful to you and how you can share those gifts with others. And on that note, I have got to go. So I just want to say thank you all for allowing me to share. Thank you. I am able to sit and nourish yourself with a cup of loose tea and, um, you know, really, really allow yourself to unravel because it's sitting and reintegrating that's really the key to all this in my opinion. Well, thank you for being thank on you. the platform. Um, I think we definitely touched on uh, a subject that needed to be addressed. And uh, to all those who desire to serve, don't lose your soul for a piece of silver. Don't mm -hmm. lose your soul. Commune with the tea, the plants, the shrooms, and ask, I wish to serve you. How would you think? What's your suggestion for reciprocity? We used to do ayahuasca on Rockaway Beach for a donation of twenty dollars. For wow. twenty dollars, and we had wow. wow. Used to be free. nobody was turned away. And then I found out in South America. I mean, honestly, the I equivalent think that of the exchange people. in South America was twenty dollars. The local mm -hmm. people give to the shaman or the server 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. Now this Babylon, USA, and, and, and the European, three, $500 for serving. Yep. It's, you're losing your soul, family. It's a couple of hundred That's dollars for ayahuasca. Yeah, it's unrealistic. Some of pe some people are doing a couple of hundred dollars for shrooms, for a shroom ceremony. Insane. Mm -hmm. Insane. And I know that the shrooms didn't give them the ashe. I know it didn't. I mean, if you go to Oaxaca, Mexico, the mushrooms only cost $10, but you need to go and talk to the elders and see how you can be a part of the community. Community, if you're really part of community, community will adopt you and will give you work to do. You know, and that's 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 partially the issue is that people are not connected and tapped into the community where they at. They want to go all over the world. They want to go to Kenya, take a picture with the president. They want to go to, to Peru and take a picture with a shaman but they don't want to take care of their neighbor across the street who needs help. It's become glamorized. And that glamorization is you following somebody's instructions and they telling you a really bad idea and you thinking that their advice is good. And so you go and you do what you know to be wrong and incorrect in the name of, of surviving and making money. But the truth is if you support community and the community adopts you. The community of Oaxaca adopted me. I have moms, dads, uncles, cousins. I know whenever I go there, I don't have a dime. I'm going to do just fine because I'm going to go and support them and their work and they're going to support me and mine. And that's part of the, the, the sacred nature of the community. And without that, honestly, you're lost. If you think and do this on your own, you're lost. If you think that you're gonna do this and get one dollar off people, you're lost. If you think that you're gonna sell the medicine for money, you're lost. If you think that it's somehow about your stature and whether you wear uh, uh, a bunch of regalia, you're lost. It's a matter of connecting the source and finding out how the source has aligned you to impact the lives of others around you and what you do with that and how you carry that forth in an honorable way. And you can make some money, but the truth is if it ends go to helping others and giving back to those who gave to you, then it's lost money and it's not going to come back. So that's all I got to say for now. Yeah, I like that. Thank you, Acacia. And I want to give yeah. you a special gratitude yeah. to you, Bliss, because, you know, you have been caring and serving and is, you have really been compassionate and reasonable. That's why you have my full support. That's why Thank you yeah. have my full I, I am a work in progress and I'm always a student. Yeah. Yeah, but you you know, I see your heart is sincere 
And that's Thank why, you. you know, you have my support. Just like Righteous Ray. She's not doing this to get paid. Right. Family, you got to have just like Logi. He doesn't do I am discourses to sell them. It's warned in the books, the I am books. Don't you ever try to sell I am discourses. Otherwise, retribution will rip you a new. <laughs> okay. And I believe plant medicine should not be sold. It should be a ministry. It should be uh, under a spiritual context that you have it as a donation and offering because it is supposed to be the communion. It's supposed to be the mana of heaven. It's supposed to be that which you take to experience our direct relationship with your creator. So if you want to have a suggestion of a donation, fine. You know, you got to pay for the supplies, materials, toilet paper, paper towels, uh, um, supplies, candles, incense, things of sort, my time. All right. But if you are if your hustle is so decrepit that you got to pimp the plant kingdom, you need to do a, a, a moaning session underneath the Chango Baptist Church. 72, wow. 96 hours to find your soul again and find out what your real product line is supposed to be. Because as far as I'm concerned, family, the ministry of plant medicine should be as equally sacred as a donation and let the people follow. I, I agree with you, brother. Thank you for having me on the show. I just want to say okay. thank you so much. I appreciate All right. And, and so we're going to wrap it up. And thank you for hanging in there, Ray. No worries. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. And both. all y'all, so we say good night. Blessed be. May you live in elevation and divine ecstasy. And we're out of here. Uncle.